Before I do taste them, I'd like to pray to God before I put any of that in my mouth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. <laughs> we rebuke the spirit of the devil. Yeah. You are prayed over. We guarantee you that you are not about to succumb to those chitlins. <laughs> Well, we won't be talking about Gordon Ramsay's favorite recipes, but we will be talking about mine. So stay tuned right here in the Longhouse for RuneStone Gaming's top 20 favorite alternate recipes. So before we begin to talk about my favorite alternative recipes, I need to give you guys a little bit of background information. What are alternative recipes? Well, Alternative recipes are obtained after turning the hard drive in the MAM and waiting for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you'll get an option of three alternative recipes. There are 70 alternative recipes in the game. Alternative recipes are locked by the tier and milestones in the hub. Additionally, some recipes like fused wire require Katerium to be unlocked from the MAM. When deciding on what alternative recipes to do, you need to ask yourself one basic question. Will I max out the notes? If your answer to that question is yes, you really need to focus on the resource efficient recipes, kind of like the pure ingot recipes and things like that. If the answer to your question is, I don't really care, I'm just having fun with the game and I want to try different things out, go for it. All these recipes become valid in one way, shape, form or, or another. Um, there's, there, it's kind of an innovative way and a different way to play the game. So go ahead and try out these recipes. If you do plan to max out each node, some alternative recipes actually get better while some kind of suffer. Uh, one example is the pure ingot recipes. They do great uh, if you want to max each node, but if you're not too worried about maxing each node, the alloy ingots work really well. Um, use a little bit more than the uh, pure ingots, but you know, you still have really high output and you don't have to work that hard. So once again, if you aren't going to use every single little last ounce of copper on the map, just run the copper alloy ingot recipe instead. There are other alternative recipes in the game where you use a rare resource to create uh, something that could be used for a more common resource. An example is Katerium wire. Katerium wire makes wire, but at the cost of Katerium, which is a much rarer resource. So once again, if you're not using all your Katerium, then so be it. Go ahead and give that a try because it's four times the output um, just to use a, a rare resource. but. Um, if you're going to be maxing the nodes, I highly advise against that strategy as Katerium is more one of more of the rare resources. Another thing to consider is that a lot of these alternative recipes improve or aren't so great depending on what tier and milestone that you're on. Some of these recipes are better for early games, some of these recipes are better for mid game, some of these recipes are better for the very end game. One example is that is steel screws versus casted screw. Both of them make screws pretty efficiently. Um, however, steel screw early game might be a little tougher because you're scrambling to make steel as it is and you can't really afford to make uh, screws with your steel. In that case, casted screw might work a little bit better in your favor. But at the end of the game where you're making tons of steel ingots, it might make sense to use it, use those ingots, make beams and make screws from that. Then again, why are you making screws end game? I don't know. Try not to make screws end game, guys. It's not fun. Uh, unless you want to see a bajillion things traveling on your conveyor belts, which I don't know. I guess, I guess that could be satisfying. Also, some of these alternative recipes get really good or once again not so great depending on your build challenge for example in a five by five which i am doing on my live stream wink wink come check me out on my live stream um i'll be using some of these alternative recipes that i wouldn't be using traditionally why because either it cuts out a logistic chain or just makes things darn easier um, another thing could be if you're trying to jam 30 manufacturers into a cave for example you might need to use an alternative recipe so you can uh, um, be successful in whatever build challenge you might find yourself in. I also want to let you know that I will not be including expanded pocket dimension, which could be found via alternative recipes in the MAM. This gives you five extra inventory slots. It's a no-brainer. Pick this up as soon as possible. Inflated pocket dimension, also five more inventory slots. This doesn't get unlocked until tier five, but get this as soon as possible also. One more thing, the end game, there is oil power in a diluted fuel system. So that includes diluted fuel, compacted coal, turbo fuel, recycled rubber, and recycled plastic. 
those kind of like are in their own realm. And in order to be successful with oil power endgame, it's a utterly necessary that you pick up each and every single one of those alternative recipes. Now, eventually you're gonna be picking up all the alternative recipes. So to really pick up ones over the other, really you wanna be thinking strategically. So I go back to what I said, think about what tier you're in, think about what milestone you're in, and really use that to your advantage. But ultimately, you're gonna pick up all these recipes in the end. So don't worry too much about what to pick up in the moment, just pick up what makes sense to you. That being said, we're gonna go into my top 20 recipes. Sitting at number 20 is Crystal Computer. Now, Crystal Computer to me is really interesting. It's one of the few recipes in the game where actually its original machine is a manufacturer and you're in fact taking it down from a manufacturer into an assembler. It's, I think, the only recipe in the game where you're doing that. And that to me seems really interesting. So I'm putting it into my top 20 slot. One caveat here is that you need a ton of crystal oscillators. Sitting at 19 is Silicone Circuit Board. Silicone circuit board is a great recipe. It's oil-free uh, circuit boards at high volume. Um, the only con here is that you need a massive amount of not just silica, but copper sheet. Oil-free is the way to be. Sitting at number 18 is electrode aluminum scrap. Now, electrode aluminum scrap is really interesting because it's oil-free scrap making. Not only that, but it extends the life of your bauxite, and it gives you a better bauxite to alumina solution conversion rate. Sitting in number 17, 16, and 15 are pure Caterium ingot, pure quartz crystal, and pure copper ingot. Now I've left pure iron ingot out here because I think that there's plenty of iron ingots on the map, but these three recipes alone are a great way to get high input and maximize the resources on your map. Copper, Caterium, and quartz, they're tougher to find. Why not put some water with them and get a little extra output from it? Only problem here is you're really trading power for a resource. Sitting at number 14 is Turbo Rigger Motor. Now, Turbo Rigger Motor is incredibly essential endgame in terms of maximizing your turbo motor farm. Not only that, um, outside of the supercomputers needed for the radio control units, it's oil free and heat sink free. Sitting at number 13, radio control system. Now radio control system requires less heat sinks and no crystal oscillators. Um, con here is that supercomputers are gonna be required, so you're gonna have a little extra logistical chain. However, once again, this is the only way to make radio control systems endgame, in my opinion. Sitting at number 12 is heat exchanger. This is a great alternative recipe for heat sinks. Heat sinks traditionally use oil, and this is an oil-free heat sink, which is really cool. It also extends the life of your bauxite. Sitting at number 11 is cheap silica. While cheap silica sure isn't cheap, as it requires way more machines and has a lower output, it does, however, extend the life of a rare resource, quartz. Use this end game to maximize your quartz nodes. This is a really nice way to use up some of that unused limestone in and around your base. Sitting at number 10, Fused Quickwire. Fused Quickwire is an absolute no-brainer end game. It'll extend the life of your Caterium at the cost of assemblers versus constructors. Once again, you're exchanging power here to extend the life of your Caterium. Why not? Put some copper ingot with my Caterium, get more Caterium. Number nine, Encased Industrial Beam. Encased Industrial Beam is really nice. Traditionally, indus industrial beams are made using steel beams. However, with this recipe, you can use pipes. Now, because of that, you could streamline your steel ingot to pipe logistic chain by making it 90 to 95% steel pipe production. You won't need to make too many steel beams. Not only that, overall, this recipe uses less steel ingots than the standard. One thing to add about this recipe is that the industrial beams are made a little slow, so you're gonna need a lot of machines being made, but in the end, you'll be using less steel ingot. Good news for everyone. Number eight, steel frame. Traditionally, you have to use rods to make the modular frames, which is pretty nice, way better than the steel rods. However, using this alternative recipe in a logistical chain with other pipe use, it really does improve. You're also gonna get a slightly better output 
and require less reinforced plates. Number seven, steel rotor. Steel rotor is a great recipe to use in conjunction with all these other steel alternative recipes. Remember when I told you to turn your steel ingots into 90 to 95% steel pipe? Well, this is one of the reasons right here. This recipe can be used in conjunction with those other recipes for a nice, simplified logistical chain. Number six, heavy encased frame. Traditionally, you'd have to use screws to make heavy encased frame. And in this case, we're gonna put the screws aside because no one wants to play with screws and we're gonna use concrete instead. Guys, this uses slightly more pipes than the traditional recipe and gets rid of screws for concrete. It's a no brainer here. You get a higher output, um, less modular frames and less encased beams for higher output. There's literally no reason why you would not do this recipe unless you really like screws. And if you like screws, get out of here. Number five. Solid steel ingot. Now solid steel ingot is a great alternative to the standard recipe. Although it requires a little bit more logistical chain, I like it because of the output. 60 steel ingots out matches a nice Mach 1 belt and uses less coal. Guys, this is a no brainer here over the standard recipe. Number four, stitched reinforced iron plates. Guys, this is a fantastic recipe because who wants to deal with screws? This uses wire, which will be used in conjunction with my favorite recipe coming up, which puts this into a nice position for a simplified logistical chain. Number three, steamed copper sheets. Remember when I told you that you needed a ridiculous amount of copper sheet in this game? Well, steamed copper sheet gives you the best output in the game for copper sheets. Traditionally, you'd be making copper sheets and constructors, but you're gonna need a ton of constructors. And with refineries, while they might be a little bit bigger than a constructor, you're gonna be better off going this route because you're gonna need a ton of copper sheets. So take your copper ingot, which is, you know, not the rarest resource on the map, but it's kind of rare, inject some water in it and make some steamy, steamy piles of sheet. Number two. Casted screw. Casted screw is a fantastic recipe, mainly because you can get it from a really early part of the game. Yes, if you're gonna be making screws, which we're gonna to try to avoid, this is fortunately the best way, in my opinion, to do it. Now, casted screw can be obtained really early in the game, which you'll need those screws really early in the game, so why not go ahead and pick this up? It's gonna require you to make ingots and translate it directly into screws. You ready for it? My number one alternative recipe in the game, iron wire. Iron wire is the only recipe in the game that you can use a more common resource to make a rarer product. It's actually extremely interesting. You can use this in all your logistical chains. Use this in combination with stitch iron plates to make an iron only beacon plant. Uh, or iron and quartz to make an iron and quartz only crystal oscillator plant. Now there's one caveat to iron wire. You're using a lot of power and you're gonna need a lot more space to do it. Because of this, I don't advise that you do this early game. This is more something that you would use towards mid to late to late game and try to stay away from this. However, it's number one in my heart because like I said, it is the only, only recipe in the game where you're taking a more common resource and you're translating it into a rare output. Well, there you have it, Runestone Gaming's top 20 alternative recipes for this amazing game. Down below in the description, I'm gonna go ahead and put a tier list in there. This tier list is ever changing and I'm adding different, different things to it. Let me know in the comments down below what are your favorite alternative recipes and tell me what you think about mine. I hope to hear from you guys really soon. Remember, I'm streaming on Twitch, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, you'll be seeing this and many other builds. Stay tuned for next week's episode, and I'll see you right here in the Longhouse. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? An idiot sandwich, Chef Ramsay.